Hi guys, Drea from Aloha Plant Life here, and today I'm gonna to be guiding you through a complete care guide for Hoyas. Now Hoyas originally became super popular as a house plant back in the 70s, and then they kind of like died off in popularity for a while, but they are back with a huge resurgence in popularity. So that's why I wanted to put together this care guide for you today. Now there are hundreds of different species of Hoya, too many for me to cover every single one in this video today, but I will be showing you some of my own personal Hoyas as we go along today. But Hoya Hoyas are actually native to parts of Asia primarily and then also parts of Australia and they live in very tropical type environments and they are also commonly referred to as either wax plants, wax vines, or wax flowers and that has to do with the fact that their leaves have kind of a very thick waxy looking texture and their flowers also have kind of a thick waxy texture and look to them. And those leaves come in all different shapes, sizes, and colors. For example, I have my Hoya Wayetii here right now. And this one has very elongated, as you can see, leaves. This is a variegated plant. And you can see that some of that new growth comes in with almost a pinkish hue to it, but a very, very pretty plant. And this will become long and trailing. And so let's go ahead and talk about growth pattern for these plants First. So the majority of Hoya are actually epiphytic, meaning that they're growing off of the sides of trees or rocks in the wild. And unlike epiphytic aeroids, such as my Monstera here, which have partial roots in the ground and then also attach themselves to trees, most Hoyas don't have any roots in the ground. Now there are a few species that are terrestrial in nature, but most of the ones that you're potentially gonna be owning and bringing into your home really are true epiphytes. And because of that, most Hoya actually grow trailing in the wild. So they really do make excellent trailing plants. So for example, I'm gonna grab my Hoya linearis from over here. So this is my Hoya linearis, and this is a trailing Hoya. This Hoya will not try to climb anything. It doesn't really matter if I give it something to climb or not, it does not like to climb. It is a hanging trailing Hoya. I absolutely love the Hoya linearis with its little fine leaves. And so in the wild, these hang just like you're seeing it hanging out of my pot here off of trees. Now another Hoya that is a natural trailer versus a climber is the Hoya carnosa compacta. So let me grab mine to show you. Now mine is just a baby, but it will start to trail. So you can see these growth points here these will get longer and as they get longer, they will trail over the edge of this pot and that is the natural growth pattern for this plant. It will not climb even if I give it something to climb. Now there are other Hoyas that are both kind of, I guess what you would call a combination of trailers and climbers. And those types of Hoya, watch out. You put them next to something they can touch and attach to, they will attach to it. And that's why a lot of people actually will train certain Hoyas to grow up trellises. A good example of a climbing Hoya would be a Hoya pubicalix. These can very easily be trained to grow up a trellis or any other type of support, but if you want to have them as a hanging trailing plant, you can do that as well. Now, another important thing to point out about their growth pattern is that frequently their growth comes in as what looks like a bare stem. So if you can see here, there's this long shoot coming out and it has no leaves on it. And so a lot of people look at that and they think it's something that's dead and they cut it off. Do not cut it off. That is where the new growth will come in. It'll come out like that, but there are little spurs along that stem where at least will develop. Now, as far as growth rate goes for Hoyas, they're actually evergreen perennials. And there's a little bit of a saying around evergreen perennials. And that is that first they sleep, then they creep, then they leap. So basically what that means is when you have a young Hoya starting out, that first year they're gonna put all of their time and energy into producing their root structure. So you're probably not gonna see a lot, if sometimes any, new growth during that first year. Now during the second year, when they've got an established root structure, and maybe it's still not fully established, but it's more established than it was during year one, then they start to pump out growth at a slightly quicker rate, but it's still just creeping along. Now, once that root structure is fully mature and established, that's when they leap and they start to just take off and pump out tons and tons of new growth. So if you're buying a Hoya, and especially if it is a small, like a four inch Hoya or a two inch Hoya, or maybe even sometimes a six inch Hoya, and it's not really growing for you very much, if at all during that first year, don't worry too much about it as long as you've got every other care requirement that I'm gonna cover in today's video right. You should be fine. You should see that growth start to pick up in year two and then really take off in year three. But light is one of the key things that you need to be getting right with your Hoyas, so let's talk about that next. So Hoyas really do prefer bright, indirect light. Some can tolerate a certain level of direct light depending on how much direct light they're getting throughout the day. Once again though, lighting really depends a lot on your individual circumstances as I've covered in some of my other videos on lighting. So I'm gonna say what I always say, just slowly acclimate your plants into the brightest locations in your home. 
watch what's happening with them. If you see anything bad or negative going on, pull them a little bit back until you find the place where they're the happiest. Now, some signs you will see that your Hoyas are getting too much light can be scorching on the leaves or paling of the leaves until they eventually turn yellow, that kind of thing. However, I would like to take a moment to point out that Hoyas can be what is known as sun stressed. And a lot of people do this to their Hoyas on purpose because they like the kind of magenta pinkish tones in the foliage that is caused by sun stressing them. Now, the jury's out on whether sun stressing is bad, good, neither for these plants, but scientifically it actually is kind of their way of trying to prevent sunburn. It's an evolutionary trait that they have created and it basically kind of like protects their internal cell structure against too much damage to where they wouldn't be able to produce chlorophyll. So if you do like that kind of reddish cast that you can get on Hoyas from sun stressing them, then by all means you can do it, but just be very, very careful that you don't go too far and get into actual sunburn or sun scorching on your Hoyas. Now, as with all trailing plants, if you want your plant to be nice and full and bushy all the way around, you're going to need to make sure that every side of that plant is getting light. So for your Hoyas, you're going to want to rotate them a quarter turn clockwise once every week to ensure that you're getting that even growth. Now, another thing I want to point out since we are talking about trailing plants is that if you don't want that plant to get bald up on top, if you want it to stay full and leafy up on the surface, you need to make sure that light is actually hitting the top of that plant. Otherwise, those leaves on top tend to shrivel up and die off and you're left with a bald looking plant. So let's move on to water. So as I mentioned, most Hoya are epiphytic in nature, which means that they're used to getting their water just from rainwater, mist in the air, humidity in the air, not from actual wet soil. And because of that, they actually really like to dry out completely in between waterings. And most Hoya have very succulent-like leaves that store a lot of that water that they're gathering. So that allows them to be able to go for extended periods of time without actually needing to be watered. Now, because they are epiphytic in nature and not used to having their roots in soil all the time, they also are very prone to root rot. So you definitely do not want to be overwatering these plants. Now, if you think the soil is completely dry, but maybe you're not 100% certain, there are a few other ways that you can tell if your Hoya needs water. Number one, because they are very succulent-like in nature, like succulents, their leaves will start to pucker and kind of shrivel if they don't have enough water. So if that soil looks completely dry to you, you know it's been a long time since you watered that Hoya and you're seeing that shriveling on the leaves, that's a good sign that it's time to water. Now the other thing is the leaves will also become more pliable, not as stiff in nature. So with my Hoya Wayetii here, right now I can't like really bend this leaf. It's very, very stiff leaf. It's not bending for me, but when this plant gets thirstier, that leaf will become more bendable. So that will be another good sign that it's time to water. Now, I would like to take a moment to point out that the thinner leafed varieties of Hoyas, such as my Linearis that we were looking at earlier, they sometimes don't really like to dry quite as far out as the other Hoyas. So just keep an eye on the firmness of their leaves. That's really the easiest way to tell with those varieties. So let's talk about soil, since I've been talking about how they don't like to be in soil, they're not used to being in soil. So I'm sure you're wondering what kind of potting medium am I supposed to put these plants in? Well, because they are epiphytes, you really need to be doing a soilless mix. And I did recently do a video on my personal mix that I use for epiphytes, and I'll be sure to link that down below for you and at the end of this video. But basically you really need a chunky, light, airy mix that is gonna drain super well. Now, if you don't really have the time, effort, or money to be kind of making your own custom soil mixes like I was just talking about, if you're gonna buy a store-bought mix for your Hoyas, your best bet's gonna be to either do a straight up orchid potting bark mix, or possibly even a cacti and succulent soil mix. Those are gonna be your fastest draining store-bought options. So let's talk about repotting because I have noticed that when I have bought Hoyas that quite frequently they are not in the best type of soil when I buy them. And I know I've told you guys in the past, don't repot a plant right when you bring it home, but I did state in my Senecio care guide that I do make exceptions for them when they come in incorrect soil, and I make exceptions for Hoyas as well when they come in incorrect soil. So if they are not in a fast, airy, draining soil when you buy them, repot them right away into the appropriate type of soil. That is gonna be your best bet to avoid any kind of potential root rot. But if they are in proper soil, Hoyas really don't need to be repotted that often. They actually really seem to function better when they're slightly root bound. A large part of that probably has to do with the fact that they are epiphytes, so they're used to just having their roots tightly bundled together, clinging onto a tree or a rock. So with most Hoyas, you probably aren't even gonna need to repot them once a year, maybe once every two years. I have heard crazy stories of people having them in the same pots for like 
16, 20 years. But basically just keep an eye on them. If they start to get root bound, like I said, they seem to do okay and prefer to be a bit root bound. But if they're getting excessively root bound and you're starting to see some kind of decline in the plant, that would be a good signal that it's time to repot that plant. Now, when you do repot it, you wanna only go up one pot size. They don't need to be going into huge pots with extra space around them because once again, that can lead to a root rot situation. So let's talk about temperature. These plants really prefer somewhere between 60 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And if I'm being honest with you, they seem to appreciate a nighttime drop in temperature. This probably has to do with the fact that in the wild, a lot of the places that they grow are warmer during the day and have a fairly significant temperature drop at night. So I keep my house around 75 during the day, but at night I turn it down to 67 because I just get too hot trying to sleep if I don't. That's the kind of temperature drop that I'm talking about that these plants really seem to appreciate. Now it's not 100% necessary by any means. As long as you're maintaining between that 60 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, they will be fine, but you might see a little bit more of a thriving, quicker growing situation if you do have that nighttime temperature drop. But as always, make sure you're not putting your Hoya somewhere where they're getting a constant direct draft from an AC or a heat vent. So let's talk about humidity because I feel like humidity is kind of a hot topic when it comes to Hoyas. Hoyas really do thrive in an environment that is 60% or higher for humidity. Now I say thrive, meaning once again, they're probably gonna perform better for you and grow more quickly given that environment. That does not mean that they cannot survive and be fine in humidity lower than that. Mine have all lived in humidity below that their entire lives they're okay. Now in my experience, the thinner stemmed varieties of Hoyas, such as my Linearis, they seem to really appreciate that higher level of humidity more so than the thicker stemmed, thicker leafed varieties, such as my Hoya Carnosa Compacta and the Wayetii, as well as my Hoya Curtisii. Let me grab it real quick. So this is a thicker stemmed, thicker leaved variety of Hoya compared to that Linearis. And I love this Curtisii with its little kind of heart-shaped leaves with a little bit of silvery variegation on there. Absolutely adore this plant. But this plant and other thicker stem varieties seem to be much more tolerant of lower humidity levels, in my experience at least, than those thinner stem varieties. So if you know you live in an area that has chronic low humidity, I would definitely go for the thickest stemmed, thickest leaf varieties of Hoya that you can find. But now might be a good time to mention something else that's become a little bit of a phenomenon amongst Hoya collectors. Let me set this guy back aside. So for a lot of Hoya enthusiasts and collectors who live in environments or homes that really do not have the ideal conditions for Hoya. So I'm not just talking about excessively low humidity here, but also people who just don't have excellent lighting for Hoyas in their home naturally. Now you can't always supplement with grow lights, but at a certain point, you're just gonna have a ton of lamps with grow lights all over your house if you're constantly having to supplement with grow lights. So there's been a phenomenon kind of going on in the houseplant community lately where people are creating greenhouse cabinets such as my Ikea greenhouse cabinet, but they're filling them exclusively with Hoyas. So this is basically what we're calling Hoya cabinets, straight up cabinets dedicated just to Hoyas so that they can provide that more ideal environment for these plants that they can't get in their home naturally. So these cabinets are not only allowing them to control the humidity better, but they can control the temperature, they can control the lighting with grow light strips. You can actually very easily, and I think more safely, sun stress Hoyas in an artificial lighting environment versus trying to do it with actual sunlight. And so this has just become a very, very popular thing and it works. People who are doing this are reporting excellent success with growing their Hoyas. But let's move on to fertilizer. So I fertilize my Hoyas with a liquid fertilizer that has an MPK of 10, 10, 10. That's just a very balanced fertilizer. I give them fertilizer minimum once a month year round. But since we are currently in the traditional growing season and I do have some of my Hoyas such as my Curtisii that have really taken off, like this one's actually kind of starting to leap on me in terms of growth. That one I am now fertilizing every two weeks. Now, if that growth does start to slow down during the winter, then I will back it off to once every month. But if it keeps up that growth, then I will probably continue once every two weeks. Now, the only time you might wanna change the type of fertilizer that you're using for your Hoyas are when they're flowering or when they're about to flower. So a fertilizer that is higher in phosphorus helps to encourage blooms in plants. So think something like a 5, 10, 3 when it comes to NPK. That higher level of phosphorus is really going to help help encourage those flowers to come in. So while we're on the subject of flowers, let's talk about Hoya flowers because that is 
one of the things that attracts a lot of people to Hoyas. So Hoya flowers come in in a cluster pattern on the end of what is known as a peduncle. And these flowers are star-shaped with five very waxy triangular shaped petals. And because they're in this cluster format, they're very beautiful. It kind of looks like a half sphere and they come in all kinds of different colors. Now, I feel I must point out that not all of the Hoya flowers smell great. Now the ones that do smell great, smell fabulous. You'll walk into a room and just be like, oh my gosh, what is that wonderful aroma? But the ones that smell bad, you're gonna walk into a room and be like, what died in here? So if you do happen to have a Hoya that does not have the best smelling flowers, you can remove the flowers. However, you need to be careful not to remove the actual peduncle. And that goes for all of your Hoyas. The peduncle is where the Hoya will flower from every single year. So unlike other flowering plants where you cut the bract off after it is bloomed, and then it produces a new bract the next flowering season, that does not happen with Hoyas. They constantly reflower from the same peduncle. So make sure you're not actually cutting that peduncle off, unless maybe it was just such an awful smell that you really don't want it to ever flower again. But also don't be concerned if your Hoyas don't flower right away. Hoyas typically need to be mature plants before they will flower for the first time. However, if you do have a mature plant and you've never gotten flowers, nine times out of 10, it's related to lighting. You really gotta make sure you have enough light to help produce those flowers. I would also recommend that you try that higher phosphorus level of fertilizer to try and get it to flower. But there are some Hoya that require some kind of stressful situation in order to cause them to flower. And that stressful situation could be getting sun stressed. It could be letting them dry out for even longer in between waterings. It could even be exposing them to a lower temperature than they're used to being in, still not lower than 60 degrees Fahrenheit though, but exposing them to a lower temperature than they're used to being in for a longer period of time than they're used to being in it. But for most common household Hoyas, really as long as you're getting the light correct, the plants mature enough, and perhaps you're going with that higher phosphorus fertilizer, you should be able to produce blooms in your home. So let's talk about pests real quick, and I'm just gonna tell you straight up, the number one pest that I think you're likely to see on your Hoyas are mealybugs. Mealybugs just absolutely love succulent and semi-succulent leaves like Hoyas have. Now it is possible to also get things such as aphids or thrips. I'm gonna be honest, and I never thought these words would come out of my mouth in a, in a care guide video, but spider mites seem to avoid my Hoyas like the plague. And maybe it's not that they're avoiding them. Maybe I just have other plants in this house that the spider mites are more attracted to, but spider mites really have not been a problem on my Hoyas. Just curious though, have they been a problem on any of your guys' Hoyas? Comment down below and let me know. But once again, I really think mealybugs are the number one pest problem that you're probably gonna see on Hoyas. If you're doing a preventative monthly spray down, that's gonna help to keep them at bay. If your plant does get them, just try to spray as many of them off with water first as you can, let that plant completely dry, and then treat it with your pest spray of choice. So let's talk about propagating Hoyas. Hoyas are relatively easy to propagate. You can propagate them in water, you can propagate them directly into soil. However, since they are a little bit more succulent in nature, and especially the ones with the bigger, thicker stems, I would do what I do with my succulents when I propagate them, and that is after you take your cutting below a node, you're gonna wanna set that cutting aside and let the end callus over. Now, because these stems are thinner than on most of my succulents, typically you're only gonna need to set these cuttings aside for a couple of hours in order for them to be able to callus over. After that, you can just pop them either into water and let them root there and then move them into your soilless mixture later, or you can move them directly into a soilless mixture right away. Now, when you are propagating Hoyas, even in that soilless mixture, you're gonna need to keep that soil more moist than you would with a mature plant until those roots start to develop. But once those roots do develop, you can just go ahead and start caring for it in the same way that you do the mother plant that you took the propagations off of. Now, I would like to point out, because I did talk earlier about if your plant starts to bald on top, there are things that you can do to fill that back in. You can take propagations and plant them back in the top. However, a lot of people don't do that correctly. And with plants that like to dry all the way out between waterings, it's gonna be really hard for you to get that to work. Because if you don't plant that cutting far enough down into that pot, it's gonna dry out way quicker than the mother plant is. And so the survival odds for that cutting that you put back in the top are gonna to drop significantly. You can, however, actually soil layer Hoyas back on to themselves. So I do have a video specifically on soil layering, which I'll link below in the description for you. But basically what you're doing is you're gonna take a vine, you're gonna drape it back over the top of 
of that soil, you're gonna take something like a bobby pin, spread it open, pin that down into place on the top of that soil. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna use a spray ball and you're just gonna mist right where it's pinned down, keeping the soil of that surface wet, no more than an inch, because we don't want the mama's plant's roots to be getting constantly wet. We just wanna keep where it's pinned a little bit wet to encourage root growth. And then over time, it will root in there and that will help to fill in the top of the plant. So that's my recommendation for how to deal with a balding Hoya. Now, my cat Toby is about to walk into the room and for those of you who are new to my channel and don't know, we recently had a little bit of a scare. He had to go to the emergency room. He was there for about 29 hours. He came home last night though. And we are, we're doing better, but let's let him say hi real quick. Hi. Let me say hi real quick. Let's say hi real quick. Say hi. Hi, you're back home. We're happy to be back home. We're not happy about our poodle paw haircut though. No, we're not. So I'm super happy to have him home and super happy that he's doing better. And as usual, he walked in at the perfect time because I would like to talk about toxicity when it comes to Hoyas next. And the good news is the majority of Hoyas out there are non-toxic to your pets. That includes both dogs and cats. They do produce kind of a little sap when you cut into a stem or into a leaf. And that can be kind of irritating to the skin for some people. So just make sure that you're washing that off if you get it on your hands and you are a sensitive skin person. But once again, there are just tons and tons of different varieties of Hoyas out there. And even if you're like me, who was not really necessarily attracted to Hoyas really when I first got into plants, I guarantee you there is a type of Hoya that you will find that you like. There are just so many different varieties, so many different colors, so many different shapes of leaves. There really is something for everyone. But I hope you've enjoyed this video today. If so, please be sure to hit that like and or subscribe button down below. And if you would like to learn how to make that perfect soilless mix for your Hoyas, you can check out this video next. Thanks for joining me today, you guys, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Aloha!